Good evening, everybody. This is Daryl. I'm your instructor for this week. Uh, welcome to Full Sail and welcome to Creative Presentation. I'm really glad you're here. I'm really uh, uh, excited to be starting a brand new year. Really excited to be saying goodbye to 2020 and hoping that 2021 is everything that uh, last year was not. So let's all have a great year this year. Uh, so I'm, I'm here and I'm going to use these uh, opening sessions that are going to be on Mondays to set up the week and to kind of be a guide to your studying through the week. You're, you're on a course of self-study, uh, but we're here to give you as much help as we can. So these sessions, these live sessions, are to orient you to what's going on. And specifically, we're to kind of talk about the reading, talk about the assignments, and show you some examples and try to make you understand as clearly as possible what we're looking for. And so I want to try to be a good explainer in that regard. Uh, that's what we're going to go through in these sessions. Uh, basically, you're looking at the, my computer desktop and hearing my voice. Now, we're on <clears throat> the ever popular Zoom software. Um, and uh, we could be using video, but we kind of choose not to. It becomes a little bit of a distraction. Um, if we were having conversations, if we were just, you know, uh, hanging out, it'll be terrific. But uh, what I've found is that if you hear my voice and you look at what uh, I'm, I'm doing on the screen, it's much more direct. I have turned my camera on. You don't. And most of you choose not to. It's it's your choice whether or not you want to turn on the camera. So if you want to see what your classmates look like and have that um, you know uh, grid view. Uh, most of you are probably just going to see people's names, you know, without uh, any any visuals. Um, I'm going to leave my camera on, but uh, I don't choose to include it in the recording because I find it distracting. I'm not all that pretty, and uh, there's really no point in it. But uh, we do use the video in um, Zoom for other things when you guys want one on one help and so forth. Uh, we find that uh, um, uh, you know a really good way to communicate and so forth. But uh, these sessions are pretty much going to be uh, uh, starting off in slides and basically breaking out into the browser and just running the FSO platform live as you watch me do the homework or show you different facets of things and so forth. Um, now, some of the aspects of Zoom that uh, you're probably familiar with. If you've never used Zoom before, it's all new software. Um, we've used a lot of business communication software before, and Zoom seems to have a, you know, a lot of nice features and, and be keeping up. Um, but uh, essentially, uh, there are two ways to communicate. You, can, we, you, you all have your microphones. I have control of them, and I have them turned off now. But you guys can all unmute yourselves when you want to talk. So if you need to ask a question, you can just basically unmute yourself and interject. Um, or you can use the chat box. We have a chat box feature. And uh, you may have to open that window to use it. But if you're not feeling like talking, you can ask questions or make comments in the chat box. And I'd like you all to go to the chat box right now if you can. Um, uh, you may need to open that window to uh, to make it work uh there are a number of features that are available off of the uh the toolbar there but uh in the chat box if you can type to everyone or you can type to very specific people since you really guys don't know each other just yet uh, you know we're just going to leave this typing to everybody but i want everybody to go down there and type where they're at right now so we can just see as a broad spectrum of, of folks across the country where everybody's at this is this class is open across the country across the world I see Georgia, I see Oregon, I see Tennessee, I see uh, Chino, I see Texas, Hawaii, Connecticut, uh, Florida, uh, Georgia. So good cross spectrum in the country. Uh, sometimes we even get people outside the country and uh, you know, it's always difficult to know uh, what time zones people have if you're you know, several, several zones away in the world, but uh, um, Basically, uh, we're in the eastern time zone here in in, in Florida, and and uh, you know we basically are 
always kind of trying to be mindful that there are people in the central time zones and mountain time zones and Pacific time zones who, uh, you know, are operating at different times of day. So one of the things that you don't find us doing on this class is really trying to force everybody to do everybody at this, everything at the same time. It is really set up for asynchronous uh, working. Um, and these live sessions, if you're not able to attend them, it really doesn't affect your grade at all. We record these live sessions and then we post the live session after it happens. So anybody who is not able to actually attend the session live can just come back later in the week and watch the recording and you'll have uh, all week until Sunday night to watch the recording. So watching the recording is, you know, maybe a secondary experience to being here live, but it does give you all that information. So uh, we have uh, the ability to, to communicate back and forth. I can call on people and unmute your mic and, and or you can unmute your own mic and we can talk that way. Uh, we do like to have a lot of conversation, but um, we tend not to use the microphones too much. That's not really a big deal. Um, so to tell you a little bit more about me, I'm a really old dude, an actual gray beard. Uh, I've been around a long time. Uh, I've worked in the film and, and video industry and uh, multimedia. Um, I started teaching uh, about 20 years ago when I was working with computer programs that no one else had ever used before and people really wanted to know about them. I was uh, very um, involved in, in doing video editing and video effects and compositing in the early 90s uh, when the software was very young and the rendering was very slow and the sizes were very small. And, um, um, you know, we were very proud of, of doing very little chinky things. The, the stuff we did way back when, if you looked at it now, you, you guys would uh, snicker, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it takes time to, uh, to get anywhere. But anyway, I was working with uh, uh, programs like After Effects and so forth right at the beginning and uh, started teaching it to other people. And that was my way into becoming a teacher. Uh, I freelanced in Chicago for several years. And around 2006, I got a call from Full Sail asking me to come down here and teach digital media here. Okay. And uh, I, I taught uh, uh, an editing class for about 10 years. And uh, after you teach the same thing a while, you want to move around. So I moved into this department, uh, creative presentation, uh, four or five years ago. And the interesting thing about this class is that Everybody who comes to Full Sail takes this class. This is the first class everyone gets. And it still is pretty much uh, a storytelling class like, like I was used to in, in teaching video. Only instead of video only, you're using your voice, you're using images, you're using multimedia, but you're communicating what you have to say and you're learning how to do it in a, in a succinct way. And the reason this class is a... Uh, um, first class for everybody is that these are these kinds of programs are what you're going to end up doing as your homework for most classes. Most classes are not going to ask you to write papers or do traditional kinds of things. They're going to ask you to make media. So you want to make sure you know how to tell your own story, how to uh, express yourself and, and use uh, common equipment. So that's some of the stuff we're going to be working on this month. Um, I like to be very available. I have published office hours. Really, I couldn't even tell you what they are because you can ignore the, what's printed on the on the, the, the website. Uh, you can anytime you want to get a hold of me, try it. I should be available uh, day or night. Uh, and the reason I publish my phone number is that if you really want an answer, uh, text me. Uh, I have my phone with me at all times. It's really easy for me to respond to a text and give you an immediate answer. Um, if you if you text if you message me on the FSO system, I will find it fairly soon, probably within a half hour or an hour, and send you back a re response. And if that's the time frame that uh, works for you, then it's fine. Or you can send me email; works the same way. But if you really really want a quick response, uh, then text me, and I should be able to respond to you almost uh, instantaneously. 
Now, I'm not an ATM. You can't make sure that I'm available 24-7. But, uh, you know, I keep odd hours. And I know a lot of you guys keep odd hours. So just uh, give it a try. The worst that could happen is that uh, I will ignore you until I wake up or I'm back at my phone. Uh, but uh, I like to be available and I like to answer questions. So never feel like you're uh, bothering me by asking questions. This is what I'm here for. And I really enjoy it. I really enjoy that kind of interaction. And most of the questions are gonna be about the curriculum or about software. And uh, I've, I've been through this stuff enough uh, and I probably have an answer for you. So now I wanna find out who you guys are. So this is our first little uh, presentation you guys are gonna make. I'm gonna call on people at random. Uh, we've got more people participating tonight than I think I can get through in the program. So I'm not gonna call on everybody, but um, when I call on you, I'll unmute the mic and uh, you've got 15 seconds to answer four questions. Now, this is not a gotcha. I'm gonna tell you what the questions are. They're right here. Why don't you just tell me what your name is, tell me what you're here to study, because, uh, uh, or tell me where you're from. Uh, everybody's here from different parts of the country. We've already seen that. Uh, tell me what you're here to study, because in these opening classes, we've mixed people from all different degree programs. So, you know, people who are here to study video game design, and people here to study audio production, people here to study sports marketing, you're all been mixed together. So. This is your chance to actually meet people from different degree programs and, and uh, um, network and interconnect in a way that you won't have available later on when you get into your degree specific programs. So these first couple of months are really important for you to uh, network with your classmates that uh, you won't maybe get to see again. And uh, it's a good chance to introduce yourself and uh, get to know each other. We're gonna have several formats or forums within the, uh, this, the platform for you guys to, to get to know your classmates. The only way to get through an online education, you know, it's a lonely business, you know, being there by yourself, working in your own desk. Um, and it, only if you've got classmates, only if you've got a cohort of friends to, to work with, can you really make it. You can't just do it being all by yourself. So you really are going to need your classmates to help you get through. And it's up to you to make connections to those classmates, and we wanna to try to make that happen. Uh, back to this, you're gonna have 15 seconds to just tell me what's your name, where are you at, what's your state of study, and then tell me two words that describe your professional vision. And the first person I'm gonna call on is Abraham Vaughn. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, she sound good. Yes, she sound good. All right, how you guys doing? My name is Abraham. I'm here to study music marketing. I'm from Detroit, but live in Vegas. And I believe there's one more, right? Uh, could be. Or did I answer them all? I don't know. Oh, uh, two words to describe your vision. Oh, two words that describe my vision. Um, moving forward. Moving forward. Sounds good. Thank you, Abraham. No problem. Uh, Ernest Medina. Are you guys hearing Ernest? I'm not. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I hear you good. Okay, good. Uh, hello, my name is Ernest. Um, uh, you can call me Ernie. I go by Ernie, Ernie mostly. Um, I'm originally from Indiana, Hoosier State, um, born in Fort Wayne. And I moved to Las Vegas. I live now, well, I live in Las Vegas for about past 20 years now. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to full sale for information technology. Two words that describe my, my professional vision. 
Uh, let's see. Consistent honesty. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Um, Gabriel Sanders. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Okay, uh, my name is Gabriel Sanders. Um, I am from Grand Island, Nebraska. Um, I am studying music production and uh, two words that describe my professional vision um, to be uh, a light for people and to help people in their professional vision as, an, as a music producer. Oh, very poetic, thanks. Uh, Matt Keisner. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Uh, perfect. Uh, my name is Matt. Uh, I'm from Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, I'll be studying uh, digital cinematography. And uh, I think for me, the biggest thing uh, is just a uh, positive attitude. Positive attitude. Excellent. Uh, well prepared. Thanks. Uh, Laura Klein. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Okay, my name is Laura Klein. I'm from Florence, South Carolina. I am studying graphic design. And two words that describe me would be creative and fun. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Marvin Miller. Marvin, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Uh, huh? You can hear me? Yes. Hello? Uh, hi, my name is Marvin Miller. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, but I live in Washington, Washington, D.C. Um, I'm studying sports broadcasting and the two things that describe a lot of me is persistent and um, funny. So you're in Washington and you're a sports guy. What would you name your football team? Your football team needs a name. Well, I mean, I'm originally from Cleveland, but I live, I, I, I've been living in Washington for like 12 years. So I, didn't need to put you I on guess, the spot. I don't know. I guess the, Silver Hawks, I guess. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was watching them on TV the other night, and I, I know they used to be the Redskins. They don't want to be the Redskins anymore, but it's just funny that they didn't go ahead and pick a name. You know, I mean, maybe they could do the Prince yeah. and now be the yeah. football team formerly right. famous or whatever. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent. Tell me, <laughs> tell me to get back to work. Uh, Malaki <laughs> It's pronounced Malachi. Malachi, sorry. It's okay. Everybody gets it wrong. Um, well, as you know, Malachi Level is my name. I'm from originally Springfield, Oregon. Um, I'm here to study graphic design. And art, artist and inspi inspired is two words to describe my visionary. Artistic and inspiring. Excellent. All right. Last one here, and if somebody else wants to go after this, uh, uh, mention down in chat that you want to go. Uh, so I'm going to pick um, William Riley Craig. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, I hear you. All right. Hello, my name is Riley Craig. I am from Georgia, and I am studying audio production. And the two words that describe my professional vision is creativity and inspiration. Excellent. Well, thanks. You guys are uh, really well prepared. You're really well relaxed. I think you're going to do great at speaking publicly and uh, and and creating presentations. So I'm 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 enthused. I think this is going to be a really good crowd. Uh, anybody else want to go that I uh, I missed? You can actually raise your hand or, or you know sort of. Um, uh, seek your attention in the uh, uh, 
participation list, or you can just type something in the, uh, the chat box. Okay, so we move on. Um, what do we expect from you guys? Well, we're not expecting you guys to be, uh, you know, fully formed uh, media creators. We know that you're starting out and this is the beginning class. And we haven't gifted you with the launch box yet. So um, there are lots of caveats in this class. I mean, we you, you have to be able to work with whatever you have. And that's a, uh, that's a challenge for me because some of you got some janky gear that you think is fine and, and you want to make happen. And, uh, you know, uh, I've got to make it sing. So um, if you're having issues with the, with whatever um, platform you're working with, uh, let me know as, as soon as possible so I can have some alternatives. But I do know that people with older Android phones have limited audio capabilities. But we've got presentation programs that work for that. We've got audio programs that work for that. We have done our work to, to know how to work with a lot of this stuff. But you got to let us know if you're having an issue. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> what we expect from you guys is let us know what's going on with you. Uh, it's really tough to be an online student. You, you're, you're in there all alone. And if you need help, help is available. We have enormous resources here at Full Sail uh, for lots of things. Um, and uh, in terms of understanding the assignments, you know, there's a, there's a description of each assignment in the main page of FSO. You know, that's the first stab at telling you what's going on. But if you want to watch a video, if you want to hear some audio, you want to see a presentation, you want to see some examples, all that stuff is available, but you kind of have to step forward and ask. Um, we don't throw everything at you. We give you a guided path, and then we give you an opportunity to uh, seek help. And so that's your job is to, to ask. If you don't understand something, come at me. Tell me you don't understand, and I will keep coming up with ways to explain it to you. Uh, if I can't uh, do it in mime, then I'll sing it. If I can't sing it, I'll dance it. If I can't dance it, then I will uh, go to hand puppets. But some way or another, I will explain what I need from you guys so you're clear on what the assignments are. Um, so we need you to let us know what's going on. Uh, we're also coming through the winter in which there's going to be, you know, at least in the northern part of the country, some awful snowstorms that knock out power, knock out internet, uh, mess with people's schedules. We are on a schedule here where assignments open up on a Monday night and you have all week to work on them and everything's due on Sunday night. Uh, and then when that assignment closes, we move on to the next week. You have new material that opens up and you're working on that for the following week. And so there's a deadline that comes around every Sunday. And um, Full Sail is very focused on being deadline oriented. Full, Full Sail is very focused on making you a very serious, accountable uh, media player. Uh, but in this first month, we're practicing a lot of forgiveness. We understand that it's hard to set up schedules, that it, getting started in your very first class uh, being an online student, the only way you can do it is to have a regular schedule, is to have a uh, protected study space. And building a habit is something that uh, science tells us takes eight weeks or more. So in a four-week class, there's no way that you can form the habits you need to get going. All you can do is get started. All you can do is try. So in these first couple of classes, we're going to be a little more forgiving than we will be down the road. And uh, that's as it should be. These are the general education requirement classes. By the time you get to your degree specific classes, you're going to be uh, in the system. You should have the rhythm of full sail in your blood. These four week accelerated classes, I know you've heard about them. I know you've talked about them, but you, until you actually feel them, until you have that rhythm in your body, it, it, uh, you don't quite understand what it means but it is kind of relentless. And so you need to have that uh, experience of going through these classes in order to build that rhythm. 
And that means that you're going to have schedules that life is going to knock you out of. You're going to think you're going to be able to, to manage all this stuff, but then suddenly your boss will ask you to work an extra shift or your kids will get sick and you have to take them to the hospital or something else will happen. You know, last year, the something else was, was uh, um, COVID and it's still going to happen for the next year. So we have, you know, a lot of challenge ahead of us. And um, in order to stay focused as a student, you know, it's going to be tough and you have to be able to forgive yourself for falling off the, uh, the wagon once in a while. And that's what we're going to do this month. But eventually, we want you to become someone who is focused on the rhythm of the classes and meeting deadlines on a regular basis. And then you have those work study habits. So that all doesn't happen at once. It happens over the period of time. And it happens when you stay in touch with us. What should you expect from me? Well, you should expect me to be, you should expect me to be available. You should expect me to be interested in what you're talking about. Uh, you should expect me to do timely grading. The way our classes are set up, everything you learn this week becomes a platform for things that you're going to do next week. And so you have to know how well you did on this week's assignments in order to go forward with next week. And that means that you need timely grading. Now, the full sale policy on grading is that anything that's turned in by Friday or anything that's turned in by Sunday night has to be graded by Friday. Um, that's not good enough for our department. Our department policy is anything turned in by Sunday has to be graded by Wednesday. But that's still not good enough for me. And my policy is anything turned in by uh, uh, Sunday night is going to be graded by Tuesday night. And for the most part, you're going to get your grades back on a Monday because I'm very focused on returning grades to people quickly so that you have the feedback that you need to keep going forward. So you can expect that from me. Um, it's your right, uh, you know, you're paying my salary and, and uh, uh, that's something that you should expect from a teacher. So you should expect me to answer your questions. You should expect me to get back to you in a timely fashion. Uh, you should basically expect me not to ignore you. Uh, professionalism. This is one of the things you click through on uh, some of the preliminary material today before you got to the week one activities. And I don't know if you were paying attention to grading weights, but this is a full 10% of your grade. Just by clicking, I have read this, or I looked at the student manual, you were given 10% of your grade for the, for the, for the month. Now, the way this works is full sale is very into turning you into working professionals, not just learning the, the craft that you came here, not just being uh, uh, intellectually connected, but how to become someone that people want to hire. How do you become a working professional? We are, uh, all of our classes are focused in on particular creative communities, the audio community, the filmmaking community, the, the video game making community. And we understand what it takes to make it in those industries about what people are looking for in the kind of people that they hire. And so it's part of our job, not just to teach you software, but to teach you work skills, life skills. And the professionalism component of this class does that. Uh, basically, at the beginning of the month, you get 100% of the grade. And if you don't have any infractions, you maintain that 100%. That's yours for being a professional. But anytime you're uh, late on a deadline, anytime you miss a deadline, anytime you don't do a project, anytime you say you're going to be somewhere and you aren't, anytime you're rude to someone else or, or uh, um, ill treat a colleague, these are all kind of work infractment fractions that, uh, you know, in, a, in a, a business, they would put on your record. And that's what we're doing with professionalism. We're enforcing the fact that you guys are, are good, creative colleagues to each other in a creative industry. And I want you to respect and, and uh, interact well with all your classmates. 
give them all the due respect that they deserve. Everyone here who's come to Full Sail is an artist in his own right and uh, deserves respect. And so when you do this for 30 or 40 months, uh, you become the kind of working professional that people in the world world want to want to hire. You're the kind of person who shows up for time uh, for work on time, who, who does a good job for the value, who gets everything done, whose word is bond. And that's what our professionalism uh, component is all about. And um, it also goes hand in hand with other kind of job skills that it teaches in terms of, you know, creating resumes and having uh, interview skills and, and, and that sort of thing. But uh, essentially, there's an entire component of your course or your, your, your degree here that's uh, devoted to making sure you're knowing what it takes to, to get along in the working world. Um, our class is based on two books that were written by the same author. Uh, and those books are provided to us by an outside service called O'Reilly Books. Uh, it was originally called Safari Books. I, I really need to get the slide changed. Uh, uh, O'Reilly or Safari changed their name to O'Reilly, and, and I, 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 I need to update it. But uh, Resonate and Slideology are two books about creative slide design. They go hand in hand together and form the, the backbone of this class. And they're all written by the same person, Nancy Duarte. She's an art director who uh, uh, was going into lots of different meetings, taking lots of different freelance assignments and, and uh, so on and so forth. And um, as, as any person who was working in the 90s and the 2000s will attest, you go to a meeting, any business meeting, and that business meeting somehow gets run by PowerPoint. I don't know how it really happened, but PowerPoint took over the world in terms of how to run a meeting. Everybody decides that that's how it's done, uh, which is fine, but nobody uses PowerPoint in the correct way, apparently. And that's what's annoying. And so Nancy was sitting in on all these meetings with creative directors. She was a creative director and everyone else in the room was an artist or an illustrator, creative director, really uh, amazing artistic people. And they're all sitting looking at this dumb deck of slides that was pretty much all text. Whatever was being said, the words were on the slide as if, you know, we're all reading them together. And uh, if there was clip, if there was art in the slide, it was clip art, uh, like they hadn't gone to any effort. And Nancy couldn't understand why at least art people weren't upping their game and trying to make presentations for each other that you know showed a little bit more oomph and pride and so she wrote a book called slideology which is all about slide design and how to design uh really very effective slides that do their job and so on and so forth and the book was incredibly successful but once she put it out she'd realized she'd only told half the story that she didn't realize that people didn't necessarily understand what the slide's purpose were and what it wasn't. And so she realized that she needed to tell the entire story of what it takes to make a presentation. And then she wrote Resonate. So Resonate's the second book that she wrote, but it's the first book that we're gonna read. So this week we're gonna read four chapter, uh, uh, five chapters from Resonate. We're gonna read one through four and we're gonna read chapter seven. And so that's probably the first thing you should get started on. Uh, this is an art book, so it's not incredibly dense. It's not too heavy a reading, but it's not nothing. It'll take a little bit of time to do the reading, but I think you'll all find it very engaging and, and very enlightening. She has a very uh, light style. She, uh, you really get uh, uh, used to, to hearing what Nancy says in your head and uh, it's all really well illustrated. So these are, are good books to read. The books are available through uh, the O'Reilly Bookstore. Uh, and uh, the way that works is it's a separate website that has an entire library of 100,000 books devoted to the media arts. So every book they have in their uh, catalog deals with 
photography or cinematography or web design or uh, uh, video game design or 3D uh, animation or anything like that. That's all media creation. And there are over 100,000 books that you can choose from. And as a member of that, uh, or having access to that library, you can, you can check out any book you like. So you're going to find it's an amazing resource. If you're interested in getting in, uh, into your own particular field of study in, in kind of a hurry or whatnot, uh, it's, a, it's a great place to find other books. But all the textbooks for all the classes that you're going to take here at Full Sail are available through that website. And I'm going to dump out right now and go to the, uh, um, uh, the site. So here is, um, um, here's the Full Sail webpage. And 1.2 is the activity where we tell you about the stuff that we want to read. And this link here, this red resonate link, should link you directly from our site to the resonate site. And if it doesn't, we need you to let us know. Because basically, we have taken your um, class credentials, your school email and password, and passed it all in bulk to O'Reilly. And, and everyone from our site should be able to get access to O'Reilly books. And if you can't, if you find yourself clicking on here and it says, hey, uh, sign in give us your credit card or something like that then let us know because we need to make sure that you do have um, uh, free access to the site for everything that you're doing now this is a website and so you're reading these books online you're connected online if you're home and you have a uh, uh, like a cable uh, internet connection then there's really not any problem with reading this online if you're using your phone, it is a kind of a, a, a an a extravagant thing to be constantly connected to a website just in order to read. And um, O'Reilly has a, a an app for your phone in which it allows you to download the uh, the book and read it offline. And that's a great thing, and we really wish it worked the way we wished it would work. But the problem is that these particular books that we have licensed resonate in Slyology. Apparently, they don't have the uh, the rights to include that in their downloading on on the on the uh, mobile site. So do not use the mobile application for O'Reilly. Uh, you have to if you're on a phone, use the browser on your phone. Use the Chrome browser, or you know, uh, I'm using the Safari browser, or whatever. But if you're on an iPad or you're on a phone, uh, just link in through the website and get the book that way. If you want to be able to read offline, we have uh, taken care of that. Uh, we have put a link on our page, back on the page where we introduce you 1.2 learning activities. I want you all to notice that down at the bottom. We actually give you the entire book. So if you want to read Resonate all the way through, uh, it's on a PDF. It's kind of big, but you can download it and you can read it offline on a, on a, a phone or a laptop or a, a, a tablet. And so uh, we we also have Slotology available when we assign that. So we are going to give you access to the book because the uh, O'Reilly doesn't give us access to it offline on their mobile app, but you do have access to the book through the website, which gives you certain other capabilities. It gives you a lot of the artwork, it gives you a lot of cross-linking, gives you the ability to put in uh, footnotes and things like that. But uh, basically, we're wanting you to read chapters one, two, three, four, and seven, and if you read these, they will come in uh, uh, directly in contact with the main assignment this week, which I'm going to get to in a bit. But uh, the main project that you're working on this week, you need these, the information from this reading in order to do it. So I want you to try to get the reading done 
before you start working on the TED Talk 1.4 website uh, site. So coming back here to the books, uh, Nancy Duarte is basically positing presentations as the way modern people in modern communications communicate to each other. And there's some features to presentations in the way that she defines them in the way that we're defining them for you today that are very specific. One is they're very short. We do not want long presentations. They're meant to get to the point. They are meant to be at the beginning of a meeting, setting up and clarifying what's going on. They are meant to pe give people exactly the information that they need without embellishing it. So I know if you were uh, to, to write a paper for a grade, you'd be filling it up with all this extra stuff just to show off how much you know. But we don't want to do that with presentations. We don't want to take up people's time and attention. We want to focus people's attention. And then when the presentation ends, you should be going on to something more fruitful. So for instance, in the business world, uh, industry moves and changes very quickly. They use presentations as a way of setting up uh, a meeting where a decision has to be happened. You know, if, if a, a, a company has to have a marketing campaign or a video game has to decide on what they're, what they're doing on the next level of the game or whatnot, they're going to pull the, just the right people together in, into a meeting, into a conference room, and that meeting will last an hour, and it'll probably start off with a presentation like this. And that presentation shouldn't be any longer than five or 10 minutes. And the point of that presentation is to clarify the issues, just to say, this is what we're figuring out. These are what uh, the issues are, and everybody focus in on this. And once you've done that with the presentation, and you've gotten everybody focused, then you can have a conversation or uh, you can have a discussion in which you actually come to a conclusion. So uh, the point of a presentation is to clarify, is, is to connect everyone to the same issues, is to get everyone on the same wavelength so that you can have something uh, happen very fast. Um, presentations are kind of viral. So why are we seeing so many bad ones? You know, you guys have probably all had presentations and, and, and uh, you know, I'm going to admit it. When we say presentations, we mean PowerPoint. PowerPoint is something that's just taken over the world. Um, and you're going to hear us uh, pet PowerPoint like a dog and beat PowerPoint like a dog all the time. We love it and we hate it. And the issue is that PowerPoint is very powerful well-created software, but people use it wrong. And Microsoft has not done anything to correct the way that people use it. So they just let it, as long as it's popular, they say, well, let people do what they want. But the fact that there's so many boring presentations out there is harmful. It is uh, hurting the way people communicate. And so, we're trying to fix that. We're trying to say, what are the people doing wrong and how can we make it better? And if you're trapped in a boring PowerPoint, it, there's nothing worse. You're just, you, you know, uh, you just want to get out of there. You want to, you know, get out of your skin and so forth. And what is it that's making that happen? Well, one is that um, they're being driven by the slides and the slides are supposedly telling you the story, but that's not what a presentation is for. You as the presenter, you as the human in the room are the one who has to communicate. So you're gonna to have to learn how to use your voice and talk to people and, and, and tell people things in, a, in, a, in a, a logical way. And what do I mean by a logical way? Well, people just put lots of boring stuff on PowerPoints. They just put one thing on one page and another on the next and then they just feel like you know, if they get all the information there, if they dump it in, you know, we can make sense of it. Well, that's not fair to the audience, and that's not what a presentation should do. Facts alone do not make an engaging presentation. If you give me a bunch of isolated facts and I don't know what to make of them, then 
that's not my problem. That's your bad design. So storytelling is what makes a good basis for a presentation. You have to figure out all the things that you need to tell an audience and you need to how to craft that together in a way that has context, that makes sense, that has flow, that moves from point to point and has a, lot, a bit of logic to it. So a good story is the basis of all present powerful presentations. And while this seems like a very simple thing, it is the most important thing that most people forget. If your presentation is not telling us a story, then it is just wasting our time. And uh, storytelling is the way that people have communicated to each other for not just, you know, a, a thousand years or 10,000 years, but a hundred thousand years. People have gone through uh, history learning from each other at the campfire and an important story has to be told in a way that people remember it why is telling more effective than simply reporting well it engages more of your brain if you tell me isolated facts and figures i may know or remember some of those facts and figures but i won't necessarily be able to recall them out but if you tell them to me in a story if you tell me to me in a context with drama and multimedia, I'm gonna remember them much more than if you gave them to me as isolated facts. And that's what our forefathers knew way back when they were uh, doing storytelling by the campfire. Our literal survival as a species depended on people knowing critical information and not uh, uh, missing it when when the, uh, the the word was being passed out. So if you had to know, uh, you know what the dangers in your life were and what survive you know uh, what survival was based on, uh, you had to be told in a way that would get through to you, that would cut through and make sense, and you would never forget it. So uh, man used to gather around the campfire and tell the story. And they tell it with media and drama and people would remember and that mattered. The presentation would cut through. You would affect the audience. And we've discovered since that this is just the way our brains are wired. If you tell me isolated facts, there are a couple of places in the brain where it's going to register. But when I want to remember it back, they aren't necessarily close to each other, close enough to each other for the synapses to, to fire. But if you tell me a story with multimedia and it's stored in several different places and they're linked in several different ways, maybe I have a sound that's associated with this fact, or maybe there's a joke that's associated with um, this, this statistic or whatnot, uh, then I'm gonna be able to recall it much easier. And so when a story is involved, people remember it and it works. So what does it mean to have a story involved? What are the elements that are needed? Well, uh, you guys know this, uh, it's pretty simple. Beginning, middle and end. And the fact is that you can do this to practically anything. We're not really talking about fiction here. We're not really talking about um, story tales or, or uh, fables or anything. Anything that you have to sell can be put together in a form that has a beginning, middle, and an end. If you just think about it, the beginning is the layout of what is, and the middle is what are the complications, and the end is what is our solution. And you can apply that as much to, do we need to order more pencils, or should we have uh, level 42 of the game end in the uh the whirlpool or the volcano um if you gather the facts talk about what the complications are or the choices are um the issues are and then you can move to the solution and so telling a story at the beginning middle and end is laying it out in a way that people can understand and follow and have a game uh you know a skin in the game 
And uh, uh, so what do we do with the visuals? Well, the visuals are there to help us understand what you're saying. So don't make the visuals do the work of saying it for you. Make the visuals support what you have to say. This is, this is uh, one of Nancy Duarte's uh, real uh, peeves that she's gonna put out there they're on us. As a, as a graphic designer, she has a notion for the way that you combine images and quotes in a way that support each other. Now, certainly you can have a slide that's an all, all text. You can have a slide that's all image. But when you combine the two, you actually get um, a much more specific meaning that you as an artist can have control over. Let me give you an example. Um, here's a quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel, said by Socrates. So you can't have a more naked quote than this. This is just black text on a white background. I have not given you any visual help in understanding what this quote means. So if you want to interpret this quote, if you want to know what this quote means, what do you have? You have the text itself. Maybe the fact that it's by Socrates means that it's old. Socrates was a Greek philosopher from 3,000 years ago. So you know that this is an old quote. Maybe that means that this is uh, old, lofty information. But that's not necessarily so. He could just be talking about the fact that education is important and uh, you know urgent, and is, it was as urgent as his day as it is in our day. So I can combine this quote with art to make you feel about this quote or interpret this quote in the way that I want you to. So looking at it on a white background, you can think anything you want. But if I combine it with an image and I want you to think about education as a modern day current issue, as, as something that's a, a life in crisis that we need to solve, that this is a modern social uh, economic problem. Uh, I might combine this quote with images of third world kids teaching themselves under an underpass. So now you have the urgency of today. You have the grittiness of the real world. You have the notion that this is a real world problem. This image is coloring the quote and making you interpret it in a way that I want you to interpret. That's a very creative act. And that's the, one of the acts that we're gonna ask you to engage in this month is to not just give us information, but give us context for information in a way that makes a, a real meaning for you and the audience that you have intended it for. But what if I meant the other thing? What if I meant education through the ages? What if I wanted a lofty sense? What would I do to make that happen? Well, I might take uh, a Renaissance painting of Socrates and, quote, and combine the quote with that. So now you're feeling like, you know, uh, this is the education through the ages. You know, we're seeing ancient Greeks, we're looking at a Renaissance painting, you know, it has this sort of uh, lofty down through the ages appeal to it. And so by changing the art, I can change the context in which you want to think about it. Now you guys are mostly going to be talking to other people that are in your social realm. And you're probably going to be making media references and pop media references. So uh, how can I make that happen for that? Well, for this quote, that's pretty hard. Uh, you guys are probably not all that interested in education. Uh, and uh, there's probably, uh, there might be a movie or two about education that I could reference this to, but uh, that wouldn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Uh, you guys probably aren't all that up on Socrates, but if you are, you might know him as a, a, a character in a, a, a Bill and Ted comedy, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Socrates. So I might take a movie clip from that and make a reference, an in reference to pop culture. If I know that my audience is into movies, um, 
then I can do that. Now, this is a 90s movie with Keanu Reeves, so maybe you don't know that movie, but they just remade a, a, a new version of the Ted, Bill and Ted movies. Uh, and, and Keanu Reeves is, uh, you know, really big now because of uh, 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 his, his Wicker movies or whatever. So uh, I've probably there's a good chance that you guys are going to get a pop culture reference to this. Now, if your audience is mainly gamers, you might end up using game art rather than movie art. So it's important to know who your audience is. That's another thing we're gonna focus on this month is we're gonna intensely study who our audience is because the point in making the presentation is to appeal to them. We're not, make, we're not making ourselves feel good by these presentations. We are creating presentations to have an effect on a specific audience. And knowing who that audience is is crucial in order to know what to put in there that, that makes them happy or laugh or, or make a connection or so forth. So your idea is to get to know who the audience is. And their idea is to get to know the, the hero. You know, you know a lot of these, uh, uh, Joseph Campbell's theory of the storyteller. Uh, the whole point of a, a storytelling is the hero goes on a journey. Well, you think might think that if you're standing up in front of the audience, telling them all this information, that you are that hero. The fact is that you're not. The audience is the hero. So when you stand in front of the audience and give a presentation, you're essentially pitching them a little movie that you want them to run in the back of your head. You're inviting them to become the hero of whatever story you're talking about. Whatever it is that you're gonna be talking about in your presentation, you want them to imagine it happening to them. And the better that they can imagine it, the better you're doing your job. So that's why you wanna use a lot of action words in your vocabulary as you're talking to them. And that's why you wanna use the slides. The slides are there to help them imagine going on that journey. Imagine being the person who is doing whatever you're talking about. So your job as the presenter is to get the audience engaged on that journey, thinking about, am I going to do this, whatever this is, whatever the subject of your presentation is. So the audience is the hero, not you. But there's actually a name for the person who sends the hero on his journey. Uh, in in uh, Joseph Campbell's uh, folk telling, storytelling lore, that's the mentor. You are the mentor. It's your job to engage the heroes, all those people sitting in front of you listening to your story, on their journey, to get them started on the journey. The hero doesn't, the mentor doesn't take the, the, the hero all the way through the journey. The mentor just simply gets him started. So, for instance, very classically in Star Wars, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is Luke Skywalker's mentor. And it actually is unnecessary for uh, Obi-Wan to die so that Luke can go on and do the journey without him. Because otherwise, he would have been way too dependent upon his mentor uh, throughout. So uh, whatever storytelling method you're using, the mentor has to get out of the way and let the, audio, uh, let the hero complete the journey. So it is important for the mentor to get started, but it is also important for the mentor to basically step back at a certain point and let the audience continue to be uh, driving their story by themselves uh, through your words. So that's really your job. It's not an easy job. It's actually very fun uh, and challenging and it's very creative. So you're going to find you have a lot of creative challenge this month in choosing who your audience is and what you have to say to them and how you're gonna to communicate to them and what, what, what imagery and language you're gonna use and so forth. And that's what we're all gonna be working on. We're gonna be working on telling a story and imbuing it with drama and multimedia. And uh, I think you're gonna enjoy this class and I think you're gonna learn how to make presentations that can really be effective from here on in. So with that, I wanna get into 
what are the other activities this month? Uh, basically, if you got the reading done uh, today or tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, then the next activity that you want to deal with is the discussion board. Discussion is called a, a presentation history. Basically, we're asking you to tell us a little bit about what is your experience with having done presentations? Did you do some in high school? Did you do some in the army? Uh, did you maybe do something in church or in sales? There are a lot of ways and you need to, you need to kind of cast a wide net on what we mean by presentation. Because it isn't just running PowerPoint and you know with a, a a monitor or whatnot, it can be anywhere and anything. So um, tell us what experiences you've had with presentations, and uh, tell us if you're having trouble. Telling if you're fearful about speaking out loud. Every one of you in this class is going to be speaking out loud. Every one of you in this class is going to be telling us your story in your own voice. Now, this is an online class, uh, so you don't have to do it in front of anybody. If you were on campus, this class would actually have uh, would actually end with everybody making presentation in front of the class to the rest of the class. They do it live. But in an online class, you guys are going to create prepared media. You're going to record your voice. You're going to add slides to it, and you're going to turn it in as a pre-recorded, pre-pre-designed presentation, but it must include your voice. Uh, nobody gets away from that. Um, so if you're feeling weird or bad about using your voice, you might talk about those fears in your discussion board. But talk about what you're expecting out of this class, what you'd like to learn, what you what experiences you had, if you had a good experience or a bad experience. So this initial post, what we're calling, essentially, if you post at the bottom of the 1.3 page, that post is going to lock onto the discussion board page. Now, if you haven't gone to it, it's probably a better idea to go ahead and look at the discussion page and see what your classmates have already put up. You know, I started off with uh, uh, um, an entry and people are already putting their work in here. We want you to get your initial post in by Wednesday night. We want you to go ahead and get that up so other people can come back and respond to it. So these, the requirements for this discussion are everybody have one initial post and two or more responses. Now I'd like to see more than two, uh, uh, but uh, two is the minimum. But basically when you do your own response, uh, own major post, then I want you to come back and you know, read what other people have written and respond to them. And when I say respond to them, I want you to respond them, to them in a meaningful way. Don't just say, hey, great post. I want you to ask them questions. I want you to add to what they're saying. Uh, I want you to be thoughtful about what you're talking about and to help you in understanding you know, what we mean by you know, substantial posts. Because you're probably going to be doing discussion board uh, uh, activities through most of the classes that you have uh, going forward. So it's it's good to learn how to do these things. We have something that we call the RISE model. RISE stands for reflect, inquire, suggest, and elevate. And if you read this little graphic, uh, it, it gives you ways in which you can look at what someone wrote and come up with a way to respond that adds to the discussion rather than just simply you know, adds, adds your weight. You know, don't, we don't want you to say, great job, attaboy. I mean, those are nice things to say, but they haven't added to the discussion at all. We want you to come up with uh, extensions of your thoughts, uh, questions, uh, uh, suggestions and things, and the RISE model will help you do that. So uh, take a moment to read through the elements of the RISE model, and that will help you to come up with better uh, response posts, but uh, the response posts are due by uh, uh, Sunday night, and uh, the uh, initial post is due Wednesday night. Now, if you don't get the initial post done on Wednesday night, uh, it's not the end of the world. Again, you'll still have the rest of the week to get it done 
but uh, we want you to try to get it up early so that people have a chance to respond to you. If you didn't put your initial post up until 9.30 on Sunday night, no one would have a chance to respond. Any questions so far? All right, the main activity this week is called Professional Presentation Analysis.